I'm with David Jones, Secretary of State. You're in Brecon uh, to visit the Regimental Museum. Tell me about the appeal. Well, I met Dorcas Cresswell, who was heavily involved in the appeal, back at the Royal Welsh Show in the summer, and uh, she told me about the museum and uh, asked if I would come and visit. So I'm spending the entire afternoon and evening here in Brecon. I've had a very interesting tour of the cathedral, and now I'm going on to the uh, Regimental Museum to see that. And of course this evening there's going to be a dinner, which is a fundraiser aimed at uh, increasing awareness and funding for the museum, so I'm looking forward to that too. Do we need museums like this? We do. Uh, we're uh, now approaching the beginning of the commemoration of the, uh, the, of the outbreak of the First World War. And of course that is a conflict that touched every community throughout the whole country, but Wales in particular. In fact, Wales was disproportionately affected by the war. Uh, and of course the uh, two um, big Welsh regiments who were ultimately amalgamated and became the Welsh regiment, that's the Royal Welsh South Wales Borderers, played a big part in that conflict. Uh, and I think that it's important for people, particularly young people in areas like Brecon, to find out what their forefathers uh, in, in this town did uh, for the country and the sacrifices that they made. Uh, to quote uh, Edwin Starr, war, what is it good for? War is not good for anything. War is the most horrible experience I think that anybody will ever go through. The fact is, however, that the, the First World War uh, was a, a fact, it was a very sad fact, but it was also a cataclysmic fact. Uh, and I think that it's important that we serve the memory of the people who served in that war properly. And I think that uh, the Regimental Museum is an extremely important initiative, uh, and I, I think that it's important for the people of this town. Uh, David Cameron said recently about um, celebrating the centenary. Do you think that's the right word? The word is commemorate, uh, and I think that we do need to commemorate it. Um, there were some significant uh, conflicts that the, the Welsh regiments in particular were involved in, most particularly the Battle of Mamet's Wood, where there was a great deal of uh, loss of Welsh life. Uh, so uh, it is not a celebration, but what it is is a serious commemoration of a, an important event in our history. Uh, and I, I think that the world that we know it as today has to a large extent been shaped by that conflict uh, and the aftermath of it. Is the, the figure quoted uh, something like £50 million pounds to be spent on the commemoration of uh, centenary? Is, is, is that money well spent? or? Well, I, I, I haven't got the precise figure, but I do think that it is important to spend money on commemorating uh, that event or that series of events, and I think that if it's to be done properly, then clearly there will have to be expenditure, as there is, of course, on a number of uh, other cultural events. Uh, and, and this, of course, is an event that shaped not only our country's history, but, of course, many aspects of the culture of this country. Uh, and, of course, most famously, the uh, death uh, of the, uh, the celebrated Welsh poet Hed Wynn, uh, who was killed in action and who posthumously was, won the Bardic, uh, was awarded the Bardic Chair at the Birkenhead National Estethmont. So culture and history do intermingle, and, of course, it's important that that is commemorated that way. But do you, do you think that it's, it's been described that these uh, commemora uh, commemorative uh, event will be like the Jubilee. Uh, I think it's very unlikely it's going to be like the Jubilee. The Jubilee was a, a, a great national celebration. This is going to be a great national commemoration and uh, I think that it's going to be very clearly the case that the tone of the two events will be completely different. Okay. Um, one, one last question. Um, who are the winners in war? Who benefits? Who are the beneficiaries from war? Well, sometimes one needs to go to war. And uh, I think that had we, for example, not gone to war with Hitler uh, in the 1930s, uh, this country and probably many other countries throughout the world would have been an entirely different place. So to the extent that we, in the last conflict, saved uh, this country from what would have been an awful, an awful fate, I think that that might be regarded as a victory, but it was a very costly victory. But do you, th do you think there's any financial gain from other parties, other institutions with war, such as the bankers, the investors? Mm, some do uh, profit. I mean, clearly, uh, I would think that the Krupp family uh, did rather well out of the last conflict and probably the conflict before that too. Um, of course, it's a controversial issue. If we have to have armed forces, they have to be armed, and companies have to... Uh, be paid to arm them. 
So uh, it's, it's not an easy discussion, but nevertheless, there will, I'm afraid, always be arms dealers, so long as we have armies. But not so much the arms dealers, but the investors in war, the bankers? Well, uh, again... The, fund, the people who fund the wars? Well, ag again, if, if one is to go to war, then the war has to be paid for. And uh, again, it's usually the banks who actually fund that. So war, what, it, war, what is it good for? It's good for the bankers? Or? Uh, I, I, I think it's, th there will be a number of people who do profit out of war. The vast majority of people will not profit out of war. Uh, the difficulty is, of course, for any nation to decide when going to war is proper. Uh, and I think that there are very few people who would argue that it was not the right thing to go to war with Hitler when uh, he was, of course, uh, in, in the business of murdering vast numbers of his own countrymen and people of other countries too. Um, David Jones, thank you very much.